Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Now, do you know, do you know your nationality? African American, black, Negro, Puerto Rican, which one is it? You come point to the side, you know which one you are. You ain't gotta talk. What, what, point some on the side. Cause we can still teach, cause I want you to know, brothers, I want you to get salvation. You know what I'm saying? We all trying to fight for salvation, we trying to save our people out here. But you gotta want it. You have to want it. American black, that's you, right? So now we're gonna go in the Bible and show you that according to the scriptures, there's nothing in the Bible that says American black in there, right? There's nothing in there calling you Negro or none of this uh, stuff that, that these, uh, uh, people put on us. This is what God calls you. God calls you Judah. That That's is your right. biblical name. Judah, other 12 tribes, other nation of Israel. That's your nationality. That's what we actually got to teach our people. Because you call yourself this, God said no, you're this. See what I'm saying? And I'm going to prove it to you. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Yes, sir, I'm already there. Let me show you how we know we're the Israelites. Plain and simple, out the Bible, word for word, we are the Israelites. That's why we need to be keeping the commandments of God, right? right. Oh, before we read John 28, give me um, uh, Psalm 147, yes, sir. 19 and 20. Yes, sir. Let me show you why we need to keep the commandments. Because the other nations out here, they'll fool you all the time and tell you we need to be all on one accord, we all need to be happy, loving each other, be one with God, we can all help each other get in the kingdom. Why would we want to help a people that's oppressing us still to this day? Right. That don't make any sense. Right. Why would I want to be in the kingdom with y'all and, and, and y'all don't like me here? Right. So you ain't gonna like me there. Right. So what the hell you need to go in there for me, with me for in the first place? I'm trying to get the hell away from you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the Christ, Christ the Bible science said we got hope. He's showing us in the Bible there is a chance, a time coming where we will be able to get rid of them, get away from them. It's coming. That's what we actually teach our people. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, at the 147, verse 19. Read what I'm telling you. This is why the Bible is important to us, the nation of Israel. Read. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments. Statutes is what we call the, the sub-laws. Because you got the Ten Commandments, then you got statutes. Right? That's what I mentioned earlier about the, the homosexuality, the pedophilia, the uh, bestiality. All that stuff is in the Bible. We ain't supposed to be doing it. Those are the, the, the uh, statutes of the laws, right? Even in America, you got laws and you got statutes of the laws, right? Sub laws that break it down murder, attempted murder, premeditated murder, manslaughter, all of it's murder, right? That's all in the Bible, too, by the way. Read what you got. He had not dealt so with any nation. He did what? He had not dealt so with any nation. God said he showed his word, his Bible, unto the Israelites. And it says he had not given it to any other nation, bro. No other nation. So you should be looking at it as a proud thing. You have been given the word of God and the understanding to know you Israel and to come back to him and keep these laws. It was not given to other nations. Other nations can't keep the laws. Right. They, don't, they don't want to keep the laws. Right. Look at them. They, op they, they open these stores on Saturday. But then they shut stuff down on Sunday for their day. Ain't that something? Right. Keep us in sin. Why they go celebrate their God, the devil. Right? Yeah. All praise. We know. What you got? He had not done so with any nation. Uh -huh. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The judgments of God are us breaking his sins. These are the judgments. When you look at the sign here, man, has this happened to any other race of people besides us? Those are the judgments he's talking about. It says, God said, they don't know the judgments. They don't, they have not been through this, right? This is how we've proven that we're the Israelites. Now go to Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to show you something. This is our history in the Bible, man. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God said, if we don't keep the commandments, all these curses are going to come upon us. Right now, yes, we are a cursed people. we cursed by God. Why? Because we don't want to keep the commandments. Right. He already said already, if we don't keep the commandments, what's going to happen? We're going to be cursed, right? 
Those are the laws of God. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 11. Yes, sir. Let me say something. Before I break up, break down more about, what, about who you are, because I'm going to keep reading scriptures. So I need you to see if you can get this in your spirit or not, right? 1 Corinthians 11, and start at verse, let's start at verse 1. Okay. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 1. Read. Be ye followers of me, even, all, even as I also am of Christ. So Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, right? So we tell you the same thing. Follow us as we follow Christ, right? We follow the word of God. Read on. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember all the things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. Right, he said, I hope and pray that you do as I'm showing you right now. And I praise you for listening and, and being attentive to this, right? Same thing we tell you right now. We thank you for being attentive because some of your spirits say, yes, I need to hear what these guys got to say because my salvation might be on the line, right? Let me hear what they got to say. They came out here this long way, right? To bring the word out here to me and the rest of the people. Read on. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So we know the head of man is what? Christ, the black Messiah, right? Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man, right? We read about order. That order ain't here on earth right now. Look at the black family. Everybody co-parenting. The woman is independent. She's over the man. And then she tries to find a docile man to make her man. But she really ain't a man because he's a woman. Right. Because he's doing what she said. Women are supposed to do what man said. Right. So she became a man and a woman and turned him into a woman. Right? right? That's not godly divine order. God says, Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of the woman. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. What we read right now, the pecking order. Right? Most high God, Christ, man, woman. And your children fall up under that somewhere. Right? So read the pecking order in heaven. And as it is in heaven, shall it be on earth. Correct? That's the way it's supposed to be. Read on. Every man pray by prophesying, having his head covered. It says every man, Christ is our head, right? So every man praying and prophesying, having his head covered. Read. Dishonor of his head. He dishonor of his head. Who's your head? Christ. So if you're praying or prophesying with your head covered, it says you're dishonoring Christ. Do you get that? What's it saying? Christ, is your head of you. Woman. Yes, the woman is up under you. And so every man praying and prophesying, I mean when you're praying and prophesying mean when his word comes out. Huh? I do that. Yes. When the word comes out, it's saying that praying and prophesying with your head covered, you dishonor Christ. You dishonor him as a man. What do you see on top of our heads right now? See you see anything covering the head? Just our hair, right? What's on your head? All praises. What's on your head right now? Why? Oh, because you got it bald? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can, you can fix that later. You can let your hair grow back out later. No, no, no. No. Okay. The sun? The sun bothers you? Oh, the sun bothers you. Okay, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. All, all I can tell you is maybe you should have an umbrella or something when you listen to the word of God. Maybe your head won't be covered that way. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we teach up under a tent sometimes, but our head not covered. So maybe you should get an umbrella or something block it from the sun, some kind of sun block it. So that way you're not walking around and praying with your head covered. So you're at home and you go pray, you take that off. Because when you have that on your head, you're dishonoring Christ. Right? That's what the scripture just said. Because the woman both do the opposite. Watch. Read that. Verse 5, Chris, verse 20, 11 and 5. Okay. Every woman that prays or prophesies so with her. So every woman that prays or prophesies me, prophesies me when the word coming out. Whether I'm teaching it, you teaching it, you're reading the Bible, prophecy is being revealed. Right? Read on. But every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered. With her head uncovered, read. Dishonors her head. So she dishonored her head. So if, you, if the woman is married, like my wife, if she, if she going to read the Bible, she's praying with her head uncovered, she's dishonoring me. Her head should be covered when she's reading that Bible or when she's praying. That way she's showing honor to me. And I, I have my head uncovered, so I'm showing honor to the Most High God. I'm mean, showing honor to Christ. See what I'm saying? Always affecting her doing things. Let's go back to number 28 real quick. Yes, sir. Let me, let me, let me show you your history in the Bible. The Bible is black history, all right? So we're going to teach you black history. We already read Jeremiah 28 15. It said what? It said, if we don't keep the commandments, you're going to get curses on us, right? All right, let's see one of the curses that's on us. That's on, the, that's on your flyer, too. 
you read it inside, the next flyer, what we read right here, if you open that flyer up, it's right on the inside. We're about to read right now. So that way you can look it up when you get home. We'll open it up. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So this is a curse to being put on our people. It says, Our sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. But not keeping God's commandments, a curse to be put on us is our sons and our daughters will be given to another people. We just sat here today and heard a brother come up and say he's Native American. That's one of the paperwork. But then he says he was adopted. His parents is watching over right now is white. Sons and daughters given unto another people. That's the Native American, which is the Israelites, given to the Caucasians to raise up. See what I'm saying? That's a curse on our people. And then he didn't even have time to stand here and listen. So we were trying to bring out because we were trying to teach him who he was. Just like we're teaching who you are today. That's a curse that's on our people. And we're going to be given to them as, as, as uh, tokens to raise up, as slaves to raise up. Because remember, nowadays, people just get our kids as showpieces. You know what I mean? They call us little, little nigglet babies, right? They're going to raise us up out of there doing some big, some big uh, humanity thing by raising a black child. Why don't you do a humanity thing and tell a black child who he is, where he come from, who his God is, what nation he is. They ain't going to teach him that. They're going to teach him if you're black, you're African-American, and you can pick your sex, male or female. Pick one. That's all the way against the laws of God, right? Finish that out. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So it says your kids going to be taken from you, and you're not going to be able to have any way of getting them back. You're going to be reaching out, trying to get them back. You're going to be crying over it. Nothing you can do. Why? Because you don't have any power. You have nothing. Okay, how many lawyers you get? They make the final decision in their courts, right? Like you want to say something bad, look. Something happened to you that way? Took your kids? You was a cop, okay? Okay, so you've seen it. You've seen it firsthand. It's a curse, bro. That's what our people understand. That is a curse on us. We need, to, we need to come out of that. You see what I'm saying? We need to come out of it because we are not keeping God's laws. God said we don't keep the laws. Were they keeping the Sabbath day when you seen them? Were they keeping the Sabbath day holy? Were they, were they still being single parent homes? The mama probably, probably got three kids in there and three different baby daddies. You know what I'm saying? Silly stuff like that. That's our people being cursed, man. We're not supposed to be that way. We're supposed to be getting right with God. All the other nations take care of their families. They get married. They raise their kids. Why the black folks can't do it? Right. That's crazy. It's a curse. And it's something that we can control if we keep the commandments. That's the whole thing. We don't understand. We do have power with God. That's our name, Israel. Right? A prince has power with God. We got power with God when we keep the commandments. Right? They didn't take care of it. So that's why you've seen that type of stuff when they took our kids. They couldn't get them back. We had to fight two years, three years to get their life right to prove to white folks it's okay to have your own damn kids. White folks didn't push that baby out. How, how she raising their kids should be on her. Right. Not when somebody else comes to step table and do it. That's, that's modern day slavery. Right. That's all it is. They say, if you don't do what we say, we're going to we take your kid and do what? Take them to the next modern day plantation. Because nine times ten, they going where? Group homes, group homes. Uh, foster parent kids, foster parent home, and then let white folks come in and adopt them because they can't have kids. Why? Because they ain't us. They see you can't multiply like us. We, gonna, we can drop kids left and right, right? God said we are blessed people. They're not. They're not. We, we know what you got. And that I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy head. No might, no power. They couldn't get them back. They couldn't tell the police, stop. You can't take my kids. He's like, no, we got a court order from white folks, see if we can. You see what I'm saying? We got a court order, no matter what's going on in the household, we got a court order saying, white folks say, I can take your baby. Ain't nothing you can do about it. That's sad, bro. But we okay with that in this society. It's crazy. What's that video a long time ago we watched when a girl had eight kids? Remember she had like eight kids and, and social, social service came and, and, and picked up all eight kids? And then she did a video on YouTube or, or TikTok celebrating. Come on, now it's time to go out and party because the kids gone. She ain't gonna have another dang old baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You seen that? Yeah. Kids go on the TPS. He don't give a damn about them. But that's a curse on our people, bro. That's what we are trying to change. Our people need to wake up. They need to learn the laws of God so we can get them out of them curses. Right? But we gotta do it together. We can't do it apart. That's the whole thing. That's what we are trying to teach our people. You cannot sit back and watch them continue to take our kids and watch these women grow up wild. They're growing up wild because they don't have what? They don't have their hand over them. They don't have the man over them. 
right? They got these weak little boys running up in them, but not being men, they stick around and take care of them. You see what I'm saying? And they have brought the women down. Yes, that's why we're here in the hood. Try to talk to our people. A lot of people ain't gonna come and talk to us. But we know they're hearing us, because we run to them a few other times and say, yeah, we hear y'all out there teaching. Y'all say a lot say a lot of good stuff, but they ain't ready to repent yet. They want to stay in that sin. And we're here to tell them as long as they stay in that sin, they're gonna die. Right. God said they're gonna die. You have to be plain and simple, man. But these are the curses where I'm proving that we are the Israelites, right? So that was your we just read you one curse. And you've seen it for yourself. That is a curse. Who does that fit? Us. So I'm trying to show you who the Israelites are according to the Bible. Our names were changed. God called us this. We gotta come back to this. What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Strong in the Lord, his voice.